Right, so let's set up our menus here. So the first thing we need to do, let's go to our own create options menu, because we know we're going to be getting from our menu folder here, we have our menu XML, we have to inflate it. So what we need to do is, uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because we won't need it, we have to return true, right? because we have to return something. Remember, this is a Boolean type. Inside of here, I'm going to create a menu inflator object because we need this. I'm going to call the inflator is equal to get menu inflator. Okay, so then I'm going to say inflator dot inflate r dot menu dot menu. Right, so now we're getting this one here. Of course, we have to pass the actual menu object, which is at the top there. And that's it. <laughs> Believe it or not, we're going to save and give it a quick run. We should be able to see our menu if all goes well. Oh, look at that. Very nice. And even responds to our click, right? So this one here has clear and save. All right, let's check it out. Make sure that at least the clear one is set up. So when they click clear, we're going to clear whatever we have inside here. All right, so let's go ahead inside of on options item selected. This is where we actually going to do the following. We got to go ahead and say if because we know this menu item object here refers to each item inside of our menu, which is clear, save and all of these others. That means we can then do the following. We can go ahead and say if item dot get ID or item ID is equal to R dot ID clear ID. That means if that's clicked, then we want to do something. Well, what is the something that we want to do? Well, we want to clear. In order for us to clear, we need to invoke our Picasso view class and call this clear method, which incidentally clears everything inside. Okay, but you notice here for this to work, we need to instantiate our Picasso view. Right now, we're just setting this content view to activity main layout, which has all of our view where we're actually writing things into, right? But the best way to do this, what do we need to do here? We're going to go ahead and say Picasso. We need to instantiate Picasso by doing, say, find view r.id.view, right? So if you go back to our view here, I went ahead and added an ID to our view, which incidentally, if you remember correctly, is pointing to our Picasso view class. So now we are making sure that we are instantiating our view in code. That way we can actually use all of the values, all of the clear methods and other methods that we need in order to for this to work. Okay, there we go. That means now here inside, I can go ahead and say Picasso view dot and I can invoke the clear. If you save this and give it a run, because we were able to abstract out all the code. Let's put a lot of gibberish here and click the menu and go clear and look at that. It's gone. <laughs> Very nice, isn't it? I say Paolo, if I can write it correctly here. It's really hard, guys. There we go. Clear and it's gone. Small things, small wins, but nevertheless, there are wins. Now, to simplify this, this so that we don't have to put a lot of if statement. Let's put all inside of a switch statement. In the switch statement, I'm going to say get item ID. I'm going to go ahead and say item dot get item ID as such. And then I'm going to say case R dot ID is clear. I want something to happen. So I'm going to say case r.id.save id. Get rid of these. I don't think we need those. Okay. I say break for now. Case. ID dot let's see we have clear we have saved say color ID break for now case r dot ID dot width I think line width there we go for a break for now and erase I think that's the last one case r dot ID dot erase and let's put a break for now 
Okay, this simplifies the whole system for us. So for instead of clear, we're gonna go ahead and say Picasso, of course, that clear. We got that one done. For save, we don't have it yet. And for color ID, we don't line width and so forth. So in the next video, we are going to start tackling all of these different menu items and create the correct methods and also the correct user interface. We're going to be using sick bars. That way we can actually uh, slide left and right to allow users to set the width and the colors and so forth. So there is a lot coming up and I will see you in the next video.